Yo, did you catch this flashback? Wendy Williams and Young Dirty Bastard. With all due respect, Miss mm-hmm. Cherry, and there's plenty of women out there like that. You sound like one of those mothers who doesn't let your 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 boy be a man and take on a new family. Because his new family, Miss Cherry, you lived your here's his family. Yeah, yeah. So I'm talking about when when, when yeah. Dirty was alive. Yeah. I mean, right now, I understand Miss mm-hmm. Cherry. You know, kind of stepping up, but not really. If you yeah. know what I'm saying. Yeah, we just wish that she would be more of a grandmother to the children. Kids, she don't how do call you, them or anything. Kids, how so. do you feel about uh, Miss Cherry? Don't Come on, Young Dirt. Yeah, yeah, no, Young Dirt ready. Yeah, Young Dirt definitely ready. And she's she's real stupid right now. <laughs> Man, if she was right here, I'd beat this out of her. Oh! Right there. Your grandmother? Yeah, my grandma. She ain't no grandma to me, so put it that way. Ooh. This is Young Dirt dog talking. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> Younger dogs no liar. <laughs> 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 I guess they just they going through That's their emotions and though. this is how they feel. Mm-hmm. It's nothing that came from me. This is what she showed them. <laughs> Got him. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> oh, oh man. Shout out to Young Dirt. And the whole dirty family. Ain't no good gonna come to Brad. Until he do right by Jennifer. Well, it's actually over, so that's that. I mean, Brad's about to um, see that his little future misses, Angelina Jolie. It looks like they're going to get married, you guys. She's going to get a, um, a tattoo of a rabbit on her booty cheek. Ooh. Her right one. Apparently symbolizing that they were both born in the year of the rabbit. He, 1963. She, 1975. And Gwyneth Paltrow has chosen sides. She's down with Team Jolie, apparently. Because she and her husband, you know, the the dude Chris Martin from uh, Coldplay, and their baby Apple, entertained the company of Jolie, Pitt, and Maddox. And the the new little baby, Zahara. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the first celebrity that I've read about that's actually chosen sides. She, and she didn't choose sides because she said, I'm down with Team Jolie. She told, chose sides by entertaining and having the kids play. You know, it's too soon for all that. Play date. Play dates. Well, Beyonce and them are winding down their tour, but Prince, here I go. I mentioned Prince not once today, but twice. Prince is busy in the studio working on a remake of one of his 80s compositions just for Beyonce. Do you remember this song right here? Turn down the music. If you could ever be lonely, think of the times. We. I'm doing it too fast. Val Young. Seduction. Mm-hmm. Seduction. Remember that song? Goose? That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So apparently, uh, Beyonce is going to be doing that song for the soundtrack of the upcoming Pink Panther. That song first came out in 1985, and that was a Prince song done for Val Young. And uh, Prince sent Beyonce the new arrangements last month when she was in Madrid, and she called Prince right away, thrilled with the song, and Prince and Beyonce, and oh, beautiful music. Okay. Hmm. You know... Mariah Carey did her own version of If You Should Ever Be Lonely back in 1999 for her Heartbreaker CD. Well, Sienna Miller, and you can never really believe what the go-to person does. Oh, look at Shawnee's. Oh, she sent t-shirts for us to wear. Only how can you really feel confident wearing a tight baby tee with a picture of the beautiful Shawnee's on the cover and the caption says... Every woman's dream. How you doing? I mean, how do you wear this as a... Every woman's dream. How you doing? It's a good picture. That is a good picture. A really good picture of her. I liked her. Oh, she sent a note with it too, handwritten. How perfectly Susie. Shanice was on the show last week. Hi, Wendy. I had so much fun talking to you. Love your show. Thank you and God bless. Love with a heart like we're 16. Shawnee's with a smiley face like we're 14. I love it. I still dot my eyes with zeros. <laughs> I'm so trying to break out of that habit. <laughs> I can't help. I just never dot. Just it always has to be. It always has to be a zero. Big old bu- bubbly fifth grade writing. 
anyway, um, oh, Sienna Miller is jumped back in the arms of Jude of uh, Orlando Bloom. She was dating him prior. Now she's twenty four. He's twenty eight. They dated a while ago, and apparently they've been seen. That, that you know that was the um, I'll show him hugs. That's the I'll show him date. She's not really back with that, in my guesstimation. Rashida Jones, we haven't heard from her since Boston Public, a show that I never watched, but I know one of those Jones girls was on it, wasn't it, Rashida? Rashida. Well, she's going to be on a new, um, a new series, which I see all the billboards all over New York. Wanted, because I'm thinking, damn, they pump money into Bow Wow's projects. <laughs> Look at that, right outside the Lincoln Tunnel. Wanted, you know, and then you pull up and you see it's a TNT television show. It's okay, Bow Wow. I think about you every time I see. Wanted. Bow Wow's got the dope um, billboard, though, in Times Square that is truly Bow Wow. And I don't have any updates on Bow Wow and Tia Marie and Sierra and what's that little man's name? Valentino. Uh, Bobby Valentino. Because I don't believe it. I think that that's something that somebody planted just to, you know, throw throw mo fire, mo fire to the Scream 4 tour or 2 tour. Um, anyway, so Rashida is going to be starring in this new drama series on TNT called Wanted. And um, it's a thriller that fo- follows cops tracking down wanted criminals in every city. And, of course, you know, she's the youngest daughter of Quincy Jones and um, Peggy Lipton from the Mod Squad. And Wanted premieres on TNT July 31st at 10 p.m. I don't even know what channel TNT is on my TV. But good for her. Yeah. You know whose harebrained idea it was for Tom Cruise to um, ask Katie Holmes to marry? Oprah. Always up in somebody's damn relationship. <laughs> Oprah was in Paris. Tom and Katie were in Paris. Oprah's cell was on. Tom had the number. Oprah, I'm about to pop the question to Katie. How do I do it? Oprah says, go over to the Eiffel Tower. And they did. And now the whole mess is unfolded. Thanks, Oprah. (laughs) Thanks a lot. How's your love life, by the way, girl? Those Jamie Foxx rumors are quieted down. Yeah. (laughs) Stefan is like (laughs) a red carpet arm candy. Oprah's consistent with um, Gail, though. That's her girl. Oh. (laughs) Nope. No, don't say that. You know what? I have the perfect... Um, song for Oprah and Gail. And I'll just make it my own little request. Number 15, Goose. Uh See see if you can do that right. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Oh, okay. I'll fight you. In the meantime, Wendy, I don't know. He said, I'll fight you. (laughs) How queenie is that? And he's right up on the microphone. Exactly. (laughs) But I'll fight you. That is straight from Christopher Street. (laughs) I'll I'll fight you. you. I'll fight you. I'll fight you. I'll fight you. Oh, oh, gosh. Why did I say that? Anyway, dear Wendy. uh, No, play it when you... Play it. I'm just trying to kick time. Yes. You have to turn on the music bed. Don't have 20 things going on. Get the wrong one, though. Go. Oh, oh right my God. One, right? Dear right. Wendy, I don't know if Hold you on. talk about this subject or not, right, but right. did you see the preview uh, for this week's Being Bobby Brown? I know that you love the show, but it's Being Bobby right. Brown is my favorite show, too. It's the only reality show. Why does everything have to start in the middle? Oh. Watch your wheel. Wheel. Wheel and come again. There you go, Trev. Start it from here now. Step it up. Oh. Oh. The moment is gone. Turn it off. Aww. I gotta bring my own. I'm sorry, Zoe. You can my see Mr. Goose. Is that what you call him, Mr. Goose? I'll bring my own scene <laughs> player. Mr. E? Oh, Ian. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Trying to be cool by getting a radio name. Nope, I'm gonna call you Ian. <laughs> Let's call him Ian. Let's call him Ian. Sorry, Mr. E. I didn't even that's, know that was your name. That's the idea, Zoe, baby. No, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Reasons to be cheerful, part three. Hey, you got that song in your collection, Goose? Yeah. Reasons to be cheerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was Ian Ziggly and the Zigglers or something like that? Oh. Something. Oh, boy. <laughs> Bianca, what's the hair report? Uh-oh. Oh, I sent Kirsten to go on. 
Kirsten had to go rescue <laughs> F- Fua because uh, there was a problem with the hair shop. So they're on it. They're on it. And they're calling my cell phone to give me updates. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move on. So there's a Gap sp- spokesperson actually speaking about Joss Stone. And I told you yesterday, although I'm getting conflicting reports all of a sudden today. Yesterday, all the wags were so definite. Joss Stone, who's 18, was dropped from the Gap ads because of her underage relationship with Bo Dozier, who happens to be 25. He also happens to be black. And this also happens to be America. And even though it's 2005, as a black person in America, we're all saying, "Mm mm-hmm, underage my ass. If he was 30 and she was 10, you'd co-sign as long as they were both white. Hmm. Right? Color is still a thing. Big thing. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all the white people, not you listening, because you apparently are very enlightened. But some of your country cousins, they don't like us. (laughs) And they would string you up just just for moonlighting and calling me friend in your head. People take the age of consent extremely serious in America. This is what a spokesperson says from The Gap. The backbone of The Gap's business is in small towns in middle America. That's why the pants are only cut for white girls with flat booties. They just admitted it right here. (laughs) The backbone of The Gap's business is in small towns in middle America where people are very, very, look, they put two verys, very, very conservative, Hmm. especially in the Southern Bible Belt. Folk, did we just get caught? Slaboos on the entire Gap organization? Yes. Hell yeah. You know what? Wow. Listen to me on Gap again. Just, I don't like this. Because, see, this is double talk. They're trying to talk about the underage, overage thing. But uh, as a black person, I'm taking this for what it is. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm going to read this real slow. See if we can get something started. Yeah. <laughs> People take the age of consent extremely seriously in America. The backbone of Gap's business is in small towns in middle America where people are very, very conservative, especially in the Southern Bible Belt. As a result, I think they have made it pretty clear that Bo Dozer ain't nothing but a... (laughs) (laughs) They didn't say that. Very, very clear. That Stone's association with the company is over. Big companies such as The Gap always err on the side of caution. So the word is, is that she's been replaced with the very Christian Michelle Williams of Destiny's Child. But you see, they did that so that we wouldn't jump up. Mm, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'm still calling it what it is. Mm. You know what? I'm through. What would, what would that be? Gap. Banana Republican Old Navy. Banana Republican Old Navy. Okay, that's wow. not a, that's not a stretch. That's not a stretch. Do you shop them? No, but there's a lot of people that's black that shop them. Is it? Black people black shop them. Old Navy. Old Navy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're Please. Now, baby. I, uh, you're, you're, oh yeah, but you know, little Kim got all that stuff so she could be associated. You know. What? <laughs> you're in the hood now, baby. But they do have the black girl leading with that dance. On, on the commercial, right? They do have the black girl leading on the dance. You know why? Because the Old Navy Gap Company believes we're only good for dancing and cooning. That's why they got the black girl leading on the commercial. And they got little Kim at, the, at her worst look, those lips. They said, look at this cone. <laughs> Trying to be like us. They got the blue contacts and judging up the lips and fading the bleached skin. Let's put her on front street. No, give her the star. You in the hood now, baby. Oh. <laughs> Kim didn't even realize what she was stepping into. Little Michelle Williams with her no having body self. Slide into the gap clothes. (laughs) Slide into the gap pair of zeros and still being able to have room for a couple of watermelons on each side. Mm. I am not satisfied. And you know what? Joss Stone, the only reason why the gap lets you go, in my opinion, is because your boyfriend is a slobber, a splabu. A a, a splabu. Michael Jackson's word for the N-word. Your boyfriend's a splabu, and therefore, you're a splabu lover. Ooh. And you are therefore tainted meat, and then nobody wants you. 
think you're angry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can get something going. Are you down with the gap? Yes or no? no. Hey, hey, hey. How do we just this into a poll question on the on website? We'll figure a way. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Dog on it. It's windy, man. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. <laughs> 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul and the Wendy Williams Experience. It's 107.5 WBLS, everybody. So, you know, we've got our WBLS cruises all summer long. We did Cruise 1 and Cruise 2. Very successful. And shout out to everybody who's on board. We're ready for Cruise 3. Are you ready? Saturday, August 13th. It's Midnight Madness. That means... Something like the boat will leave at midnight as opposed to sundown or, you know, almost at six o'clock, you know. It's going to be sexy. Gourmet buffet, dessert, the music, today's R&B and classic soul on three decks. Chuck, chill out on the mix. Get your tickets now. Don't forget Cruise 3 is happening on Saturday, August 13th on the Horizon Yacht. And you can call... Um, Two one two three zero seven seven one seven one. That's Ticketmaster, or you can log on to Ticketmaster dot com and get your um, get your tickets. Once again, that's Saturday, August thirteenth. It's sponsored by Foxwoods Resorts and Casino. It's closer to uh, New York than Atlantic City. Foxwoods is. Did you hear about the guy who called the cops because somebody stole his weed? Yeah. Well. There's a man in Texas, and he was arrested on Monday after he called the cops to complain about somebody taking his weed. <laughs> he must have been blind out of his mind. Cush, cush, purple, purple, chief, chief. <laughs> Damn. His name is Stephen Knight, dumb kid, 17. He said three men broke into his apartment. Hog tied him with Christmas lights <laughs> <laughs> and stole his weed along with a plasma screen TV. The you cops, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> he must have had some of that. What do you call um, what do you call like love boat weed? That's you know the weed soaked in the embalming fluid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes you think stuff is going down. <laughs> 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 what you know about that? Oh, read my book. <laughs> Police are looking for the suspects. In the meantime, they arrested Mr. Knight after finding several marijuana plants growing under the heated lamps in the apartment and four grams of harvested marijuana and a couple of tabs of ecstasy. <laughs> Out of his mind. Hello? <laughs> He said the three men broke into his house early Monday morning and demanded, here's the quote, where's the weed? <laughs> that's that's his quote. <sighs> See, that, that new strain will have you doing stuff like this. I don't know what the hell. Th this, that, that, that you all, I don't know what that is. That is not that same stuff that, you know, the older set back in the day used to. Use the album cover and clean the seeds. The seeds would roll into the shag carpet, and you know, <laughs> it, would, it would smoke like something that you grew in your windowsill of your house. But, but you know, it was what it was. We didn't have you out here calling the cops on yourself. <laughs> you know, and that's for sure. All right, uh, call the number. Um, uh, 10 on the telephones. I have something nice for you to win here at WBLS. Are You the Girl? It's a gift pack for Are You the Girl? It uh, features three, um, a three-in-one MP3 player and a copy of TLC's Now and Forever, the hits available in stores right now. Plus, a reminder, don't miss the premiere of the new reality show Are You the Girl with T-Boz and Chili, 8 p.m. on Wednesday night on UPN and listen to WBLS on Thursday for your chance to grab that grand prize, which is an RCA uh, Lyra personal audio video jukebox. Oh, there's a quiz question. Oh, well, you just can't win. Here's a quiz question to win. All right, call the number 10, and then you have to get the quiz question. Which member was not an original member of the group? That's a good one. Zoe? 
when you get caller number 10, you have to make sure that they have the answer, which is at the bottom of the page. And I'll give you a hint. She doesn't have a finger in her. At least now. <laughs> Don't you get it? No. There was a... Chili. All right. I gave it away myself. Chili. Oh, wow. I, I was in. Was in. <laughs> ah, silly. All right. Caller number 10 right now. You get the Are You The Girl prize pack. Um, and, and that's what's going on right now. One, hold on, Nicole. 107.5 WBLS. Com. Hi, everyone. It's me, Wendy Williams, to talk to you about L.A. weight loss. Now, listen. I'm a woman of a certain age. I don't do poom poom shorts. But I could if I wanted to, thanks to LA Weight Loss. I no longer have that upper thigh rub. You know that rub, like you're going to start a brush fire. <laughs> Thanks to LA Weight Loss, I lost about 17 pounds over a year ago and have not gained a bit of it back. They taught me the tools that I need to keep this weight off for a lifetime, honey. No pills. I don't go to the gym. I'm embarrassed to say, but look, I'm a busy mother. I'm a busy working woman. I got a career. I don't have time. I go up and down the flights of stairs when I can. I don't use the elevator. I have a thyroid condition. I can't take crazy pills when I diet. LA Weight Loss was a weight loss program right up my alley. And I love the fact that I have a one-on-one -on -one weight loss counselor that helps me lose my weight. You'll have a one-on-one -on -one weight loss counselor too. Listen, we all know being overweight affects who we are. It affects our energy level. It affects our self-confidence and our self-esteem. And even worse, obesity comes with some serious health-related issues like high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, and osteoporosis. My kid is four years old. I can't afford to have any of this stuff tear me down. Thank you, LA Weight Loss, for making me feel 18 all over again. But between me and you, I wouldn't trade my life to be 18 unless I can take my woman of a certain age brain with me. No lie. But back to LA Weight Loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. I love it. 1-800-448-TRIM. Thank you, LA Weight Loss. Today's, today's, today's R&B and Classic Soul. 107.5 WBLS. Wendy Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. Remember that? Oh, that baseball player. Yeah, that, yeah, that Art was had a crush on. No, we, we don't want to do a man like that. I mean, he doesn't understand. Yeah, yeah, he'd be coming in and getting hit on the whole time. <laughs> Remember the baseball player from the Nork Bears? I forgot his name. Anyway, so, um, you know, Puffy... Has a neighbor by the name of Rosie O'Donnell. We all know her, right? Mm -hmm. You probably heard this story by now, I realize. Oh, well. So we're going to do it for you now. <laughs> he threw an extravaganza with the fireworks and blah, blah, blah. The show reduced her kids to tears. She was fuming. She spent all night calming her puppies down and consoling her kids. They were terrified. Sounded like a war zone in Baghdad, the London subway, a hotel in Egypt, and on and on. Rosie goes on to say... Well, Rosie, why didn't you just go over and join the party? When you live in those kind of neighborhoods, do you notify one another that, look, I'm about to have a big party with fireworks. Come on over and enjoy the fun. Or in, your, in this envelope, you're going to find a night's hotel at the Ritz-Carlton. I mean, wouldn't that be the rich neighborly thing to do? Rosie, ever since you came out, you've just been so cantankerous. Just such an evil queen. <sighs> Got your boxers in a bunch. In the meantime, Puffy, <clears throat> you'll notice when you see ads for Sean John, it'll say, Sean John, New York, Los Angeles, Paris, London, Tokyo. When in fact, the only flag, the only store, period, is New York. <clears throat> He's working on opening one in Los Angeles. But the reason that the other names are on there outside of New York is because they are fashion capitals of the world. I got that from my women's wear daily, which makes sense. I mean, who are we to ask? Wouldn't you just assume if you saw Sean John, New York, Paris, London, Tokyo? I was falling for it. I opened my new women's wear daily. I saw that. I was like, oh, the joke is on us. Like Usher and them babies. <laughs> Oh, you fooled us, Diddy. Or whatever your new name's gonna be.
Shout out to John Singleton. I'm not one for going to the movies. I haven't seen Hustle Flow. Don't intend on seeing it, but that's not because of you. That's because I don't have the patience. But congratulations, nevertheless. People are going to that movie and, and liking it. In the meantime, John Singleton is busy, you know, kicking over bootleg tables. According to today's newspaper, he went down to the notorious bootleg section of New York City Canal Street and bought up a whole bunch of copies and went to the, from one to the other, just buying up copies so he wouldn't be bootlegged. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> the LA Times, we know that newspaper. There's a music writer named Robert Hilburn. Robert promised, promised, promised that he would not reveal the names of the high-ranking music people that he asked to speak candidly about today's pop music and the stars. But this is what one anonymous executive had to say about Eminem. I feel his moment has come and gone. And regarding Britney Spears, the same executive says, trust me, she's over. Another adds about Christina Aguilera that she's too volatile to remain relevant. Yet the majority of these, and there were 21 um, executives, bigwigs polled under the witness protection of the LA Times and this writer. The majority of them agreed that Usher has the staying power. He's got the stuff that legends are made of. Um, 17 of the 21 said Usher is definitely in the top 10. They say six of them picked him as the absolute number one. Like, like you know, this man will be around forever. And here's a quote from one of these people. He could be the Michael Jackson of this decade. Alicia Keys also ranked up there real high in the top ten. He said, you know, she's got the stuff. And the rest of the top ten, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Out- Outkast, 50 Cent, Kanye West, and Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. along with Josh Gorbin, then Green Day, U2, Gwen Stefani, Linkin Park, Maroon 5, and John Legend. Anna Nicole Smith um, ripped her. What is going on? I'm trying to make sure that his closing is done correctly. Uh, Okay, okay. It goes, peace party people. Ha ha, see you later. (laughs) I'm not saying bye-bye. It's pretty self-contained. Miss Audie, yeah. you you know that baseball player that you thought was real cute mm-hmm. from Newark, New Jersey? Sure do. He's trying to come up here and see us. Oh. <laughs> I told him you don't want to do it to yourself, Miss Audie. Yeah. We will torment you. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Anna Nicole Smith was partying in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and she entered a wet t-shirt contest at the club called Freaky Tiki. She she lifted up her shirt and exposed her breast, oh. ripped it off, then hit her boyfriend, Larry Burkett, in the head and sat in the old man's lap and gave him a grinding lap dance. Oh. Then ended up leaving the club with the old man with the lawyer Howard Stern in tow with her dog in his hands. She's a mess. Whatever happened to the Anna Nicole Smith reality show? I'll tell you what happened. Nobody cares. Fire. That's what people care about. The B and Bobby Brown. Shout out to Super J. Super J is asking, Wendy, how do you feel about Ryan Seacrest threatening to leave American Idol if they don't give him more money? Personally, I hope that Fox calls his bluff. I mean, what the hell is he going to do without American Idol? His whole career outside of the show is one big yawn. Yeah, it's not like he's, you know, some award-winning disc jockey. I, I mean, I... And I'm not doing any comparison. That's not what I'm doing. All I'm saying is is that Ryan Seacrest, I don't believe, has an allegiance to his radio career. You know, he's just kind of like, you know, he's there. His career is more American Idol, I think, than it is radio. Out in in L.A., they really don't care about radio like a lot of other places. I mean, I know you guys care. Shout out to everybody listening on the beat. You know what I mean? 
That's why I'm on this time of day out there because they feel, you know, Wendy, radio is just a passing thing in L.A. It's not really something that people pay attention to. You know, your show is a show, you know, you got to pay attention from one story to the other. Out here, people are driving their convertibles to the studios, trying to get bigger jobs, not slum it in radio. So we'll put you on, but this is where we stick you. Because, uh, you know, they care more about Ryan Seacrest. Oh, I don't give a rat's behind about Ryan Seacrest, his radio career, or the future of American Idol, Super J. I'll be honest with you. Who cares? You guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the, um, whatever you're up to. What is it, day where you are, night, evening, morning? This is such a crazy show. <laughs> You all take it easy, and I love you for listening. God willing, we'll be together again tomorrow. Bye bye. Peace, party people. <laughs> See you later. Cause I'm saying bye bye. Good night. Program complete. Did he click me off from everybody else? Did Goose do it right? Yeah, yeah, we then what is that noise? That's your headphones. No, it's not. Oh, it's Art's phone on vibrate. It's vibrating? Shout out to everybody in Newark. Boy, do I have a story for you. Oh, remind me to show you something. Uh, does it involve me having to get up and go look someplace? I'm too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> really, the bonus hour's coming up in just a matter of moments, okay? Give me a chance to go wash my hands and get some fresh water. <laughs> like a dog or a cat. Fresh water. And I'll be back. Uh, uh, y'all don't go nowhere now. Chair? Okay. 107.5 WBLS. 107.5. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. Hmm. Hey. What's this? Turn me up. Oh, is this from today's newspaper? Yeah, I couldn't believe hey. that. Super hey. Super head in the bone in the boondocks. Um what does this say? Hey, what's this about some video vixen leaking sensitive information about certain men she's known? It's true, granddad. <clears throat> she wrote a book. You didn't read it, did you? No. Good. You stay out of your granddaddy's business, boy. <laughs> You're in it too? Yeah. And then the other one says you guys aren't in it. Uh huh. Uh-huh. It's just the fact that she made it to the comics. Why? That's comical that she wrote the book. Yeah, yeah but you, when you read the off. comics, you don't expect to see Superhead in there. You expect to see Charlie Brown. Brown. Yeah, but he's a he, but he's a black man though. So no, I know, I know. Yeah. Was he saying that with grease in his voice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a little angry. <laughs> Superhead made it to the comics, <laughs> and I haven't. <laughs> <clears throat> that guy that has those topless pictures of that flatsy Cameron Diaz. Does anybody really care about seeing that? Is that really a big deal? Sort of. Well, she was 19 at the time. It was years ago. It wasn't like she was doing anything scandalous. But he's facing six years in prison. Oh, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. His name is John Rudder. And he was convicted Monday of forgery, attempted grand theft, and perjury. He testified that he gave Cameron two days to pay him $3.5 million for the pictures that he snapped when she was 19. Otherwise, you know, he's going to do something with him. Well, maybe six years for extortion. Yeah. You know what I mean? What a dumb guy. Yeah. That is dumb as Ashanti for not just paying that guy the money that he was owed. Because she could have gotten off for less than $75,000 and see it? a couple of acknowledgments. Did I see what? The, the Ashanti tape. 
No, I didn't see the Ashanti sex tape. I'll put it up for you. Let okay. me say, put it up while I'm talking. Okay. Yes, yeah, she's in multiple hot water. Well, not hot water anymore because the, the verdict is in and she owes the guy. She, um, <clears throat> he discovered her and then Murder, Inc. came and took her the rest of the way. And he said, okay, go on without me. <laughs> Eddie Murphy. Go on without me. <laughs> but let me do a couple of songs on your new CD. And, and, you know, then he'd be getting, you know, a couple checks from that or a few checks or however that works. And then it would be done. But now, because they had to take it to court, years have gone by, mental anguish, cruelty. R. Kelly, Little Kim, and a number of other, you know, splaboos that have gone through it since then. So the court system is a little bit more savvy to the splaboos and, and, and what all is going on. Now she's got to pay him $632,000. Damn. And there's no telling she'll ever make that money back. Just because you she she you got to be banking on her next CD is going to you know sell well she's going to do well she's going to continue life as you know a potential spokesperson and all like that she just hasn't been able to quite get that Beyonce thing going on and she's not in a bad position but six hundred and thirty two thousand dollars certainly does take her a bit out of her game I would think it's like when Lauren Hill got. Poach. You remember Lauren Hill poached all that stuff? Lauren had to pay like $3 million. Wow. I was talking to Henchman behind the scenes. I was like, you know, because you know, we were talking about that case. I was saying to him, you know, I was talking to him about, you know, Ashanti in that case. Jimmy Henchman was up here earlier. He won against 50 Cent. We were talking about David beats Goliath. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's basically the story. Hench Henchman beat 50. This, this man, Gerard, or whatever his name is, beat Ashanti. These guys over in New Jersey looks like they're going to be ludicrous with the with the song "Stand Up" that they dropped in Ludacris's hand years ago, and then Luda turned it around allegedly. Well, depending on what the court, what jury says, it sounds to me like he turned it around and made it his own joint and left them, you know, in the woods where they found him. They weren't left in the woods, actually. They're from New Jersey, but you know, Luda's thinking that. Hold on, let me look at the Ashanti. Take it from thing. the beginning because you see her face in the beginning. There you go. Check out her face. Oh, so that's her. That's her. Oh, that's Ashanti. She's oh. masturbating. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Zoe, cover your virgin eyes. Oh, my God. Look at Mrs. Ashanti. She's in a car. She's in a car. What is that? Shaved cleaner? What is that? I don't know. Oh, she's bending over and doing it from the back, too. Opening up her booty for... Oh. Oh. Well, the, turn it back around. Turn it back around. Start from the beginning. I'm trying to figure out. How'd you know she was in a car? It looked like a car. It is a car. Oh, yeah. She is in a car in the woods. Yeah. What is that? Irv Gotti took her on a camping uh -uh. trip. No. <laughs> Where his wife and kids were away. That's nice. It's a sexy sex. It's a sexy sex. Come here, girls. It's a car. All right. Listen to me. I'm jaded. So I'm gonna sit, sit down. I'm gonna let all the girl Fridays come over. Come on, girl Fridays, come over here. Start from the beginning, Miss Artie. Oh my goodness, Artie. You ready? What? I remember, girls. What? Wait. You gotta react out loud because it's radio. Look at Ashanti. Mm -hmm. Look. Wait, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Ashanti sex tape. Oh my god. Our final porn. Oh. Oh my God. I, I got Eve too. Oh I see Eve. No, <laughs> it's not a oh my God! Oh, she's a dirty yeah, girl. Yeah, it's so much. She is. Look at that dirty whore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, the pink beat's not so pink though. It's oh, pink. no, it's not. No, it's it's, 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 well, it's well done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's well done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's well done. yeah. It's well done. yeah. 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 A lot oh, of friction. Doing this one. <laughs> she's masturbating. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Run it again. You guys react while I continue with the show. Oh, anyway. <laughs> there was no mistaking her. That's, no, yeah. That's, That's her. her. Yeah. What do you say, counselor? Huh? 
What did you say? I said, you, there's no mistake, and that's her. Like, you could get a full face shot. That's Bian Bianca. She's queen of the interns. She graduated from Boston College, and she's major. she majored in law, and she's about to start law school um, as an entertainment attorney. So she has, um, she's now the queen of all interns because Taryn went to work full-time at MTV. Sustained. So she is our <laughs> in-house counsel here at the show. I feel dirty now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, or like you're not doing something right, right? That's that's what you got to do to land a ball. There you go. Uh -oh. I need to take notes. You better take some notes. Is that what you got a long way to go? Oh. I mean, I don't need to take notes to learn how to do that. Well, show us. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you crying for? She says she has a long way to go. Oh. I mean, I can do what she's doing right there. Oh! <laughs> Zoe. Just not in the car. That's where you better learn how to do it. The bedroom is boring. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> You know, everybody does the same basic... Listen, everybody does the same basic thing. The way you keep it exciting is to do it in different places, like in the woods, in a car. Absolutely. Oh. In broad daylight, Wendy. In broad daylight. Yeah. Oh, who said that? Young one. <laughs> that say? Oh. Who said that? Is it Queen Africa? Oh, this young girl. Oh, this little this girl. Young, young girl. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Say oh, different. You know, All right, you can take that off the screen saver. Wow. <laughs> the wow. screen saver. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, Ashanti, we're frozen on your white manicure and your brown <laughs> and your brown booty. <laughs> <laughs> All opened up. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Where can people go see that? Right. Do we have to pay? No, no, somebody sent it to me. Oh, forward that to me. Why don't you forward it to... Uh, <laughs> me. Uh, why don't you put it on your website? It's I can't put that on the wendywilliamsexperience.com. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. This is a family show. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> put it on your website, artiesfreakyworld.com. <laughs> what is your website? You always lie and say you're going to put something up there, no, and I get all no, the... it's my name, arthurjevans.com. Okay. Mm. Hmm. E V E A how do you say E V A N S. Okay. A E V A N S A N U S U S No uh, look um how fast can you get it up there? Can you get it up there before the show's over? I'll try. What does that mean? Oh <laughs> I want responses. Girls, fill up the fax machine. <laughs> People are going to be watching and faxing and faxing and watching. Oh, boy. How fast can they be there, Art? I would like to move on. They give me a half hour. All right, a half hour. Okay, so it's 11 and a half minutes after 6. By 6.40... But everybody has it. It's going around to everybody. It's like one of them things that's passing around to everybody, so everybody has it. I don't care. Look at it. Let's look at it together as a family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then fax me and let me know what you think. <laughs> I wonder if Ashanti's moms has seen it. No. She probably learned all them tricks. She was on the camera. <laughs> you know. Oh. Nope. Nuts don't fall far from the tree. Oh. <sighs> Let's stop. And by the way, she takes it all off. If you if you happen to be wondering, she, yeah, she takes it all off. <laughs> Wendy, did Mary J. Blige get her breast implants removed? Why are you asking me that? Is she saggy? She was so perky. I know she had the implants going on. She and Misa Hilton, Brynn, and little Kim. That's when they were all got along together. They probably got a three, a three, uh, some special or something. I don't know, Bianca. Well, oh, her chest looked mighty flat on the BET Awards. Maybe plastic surgery is a mark of the devil. It's something, you know, Mary goes in and out of her thing. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see the B. I, I still haven't seen the BET Awards. <laughs> What's good, Nork? Got something for you. Where's my story? I saved it just for Nork. What the hell happened to my paperwork? <clears throat> Can you get off the web? Or, uh, I'm sorry. <coughs> just finish sending that and then pay attention to the sounds. Hey, um, Wendy, where the hell is Trev Hollywood? Don't tell us you put him where back there. <laughs> With our dearly departed Dave and Black Rich. And where the hell is Marty? 
And what the hell happened to Switchblade D? P.S. I feel bad for Ashanti, but that bitch Beyonce, she know damn well she stole that song, Baby Boy. <laughs> hey, Trev Hollywood is right here. I'm right here. Chewing gum, see? You hear the gum? You, you hear him in here. He's going on vacation next week and wants to be sure that somebody can drive the car right, so he put Goose up to it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Goose has been messing up every other time. <laughs> but he's just learning. <clears throat> Dateline, Newark, New Jersey. This just in. I don't believe this for a minute. It happened between Mayor Sharp James and Democratic challenger Cory Booker. Things have been escalating on the streets between the two since the movie Street Fight aired recently. What the hell is this? Forward me a copy of this. Street Fight is a documentary. Documentary. I've had a problem with that word all my life. <laughs> Film about the mayoral election. Hold on. Of 2002 in Newark. The movie reveals how Sharp used the trappings of his office to keep Corey from reaching Newark's voters by having firemen tear down his signs and using cops to kick Corey out of public events. <clears throat> Corey and his people promised this election would be different. Today, and this is, oh, this is left over from July 15th. So this happened July 15th. This happened to still been in my notes. Corey visited a basketball tournament in the projects in the East Ward, which was sponsored by the city. Housing authorities called Sharp James, the mayor, who raced over there with a police escort to try and kick Corey out. Sharp arrived and immediately threatened Corey to have him removed. Corey stood his ground and said it was public property. Sharp then threatened to kick Corey's behind. Corey, who stands six feet three and weighs 221 pounds, stepped up in Sharp's face and told the mayor of the city he was tired of being bullied. And if Sharp wanted a piece of Corey, take his best shot. Shut up. <laughs> Hell to the no, as Whitney Houston would say. Sharp was surprised at getting stepped to by Corey, who was much younger and much bigger. Police officers separated the two and tried to remove Corey. That's when Corey's crew, Oscar James, Sidney James, and six other brothers, stepped up and got his back. The police backed off when Corey stepped up in Sharp's face again. It was straight out of training day, just like when Denzel Washington got the bullet in his behind and everyone in the projects turned on him. Sharp, aww. I don't believe this. Mayor James, is this what's going on? Challenger Corey, what is really good? Hun Hamlin and Ridley, holla at ya, girl. It's my law firm over there. Hey, Bray. Hey, Zariah. Dear Wendy, I've been dating a guy for almost two years. When I met him, he was living with someone and is still living with that person. <clears throat> we have a lot of fun together, but there are times when I get annoyed because there are times when he needs help with things having to do with work. And he comes to me because his wife, as he calls her, is not helping him. I have met everyone in his family, but I was introduced as his partner and his friend. His family was very welcoming. My problem is I know that he has been with his wife for over seven years. And all I can think about is the fact that if we end up being together, just us, he will do the same thing to me that he's done to her. Yes, I do look at it as cheating, even though my girlfriends <clears throat> say that they're not married, so there is no entitlement. My best friend feels that if she was doing what she needed to do at home, he would never give me a second glance. Funny enough, he would always say that he wants a woman who would have no problem with him sleeping. Wait, no problem sleeping with him regularly instead of trying to keep him in check by sleeping with him on occasion. Oh, that is so 80s. Withholding booty? <laughs> I had to end up telling him blah, 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 so on and so forth. We have a house together, but we do not live in it. 
it was given to us by a family member right now he's waiting for the house to be completely renovated before moving in will i be moving in as well no i have my own place do I love him? Yes. Do I want to be with him? Yes. I'm afraid that if I pursue him and it's me alone, there will be problems. What should I do? You're right. I mean, you know, <clears throat> for whatever reason, he's with this woman of seven years. He's with her, not you. Hasn't introduced you as his as his girl lover. Introduced you as a coworker trying to slide you in the back door to family. He wants you as a side piece. He, want, he You are exactly what he wants. Side joint. Mm -hmm. And you don't want him when he's freed of her. If he ever is freed of her. Because he will do to you what he's done to her. <clears throat> get out before you get pregnant. Oh. Why don't you give him an ultimatum? Because at this point you have nothing to lose. Now what's it going to be? Me or her? Oh, baby, as soon as the renovations are done in the house, we're going to live together and be, ah, oh, please, move on with your life. He's been with her for seven years. He's been with you for two years. For two years, you've been putting up with this crap. You're the side, John. Terry, you're the side, John. <clears throat> Can you go on um, eBay and tell me if Big Pun's chain is there you can't touch the computer because Ashanti's porn video is downloading to ArthurJEvans.com. <laughs> what is the deal? No, I'm going to it right now. Okay. eBay? <clears throat> yeah. I would just like to see if there's any correspondence on there. Did anybody buy it? Is the chain still on there? What is going on? I heard a grimy interview on satellite radio. Um, Remy Martin was talking and talking about Pun's um, widow. Talking about how, well, she was juggling several different situations wow. at the time. Yeah, at the time of his death, and you know, you know, when when you come and you ask your people's people for help, Remy was breaking it down. I mean, you know, Remy's got that 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 way of delivering. You know, Remy, all you know, gutta and ghetto. I mean that in the best way, Remy. But you were breaking it down with that homegirl you were talking with. But they were saying um, on this, and I heard it for myself. I heard it on on, on the satellite. <clears throat> no, I don't have it. No, I'm not getting it. But, you know, <laughs> one of the street team, you know, for my CD, Wendy Williams Brings the Heat Volume 1, one of them has it. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I was playing around with it and stuff. But Remy was saying that Pun's widow, you know, had a, s other situations. And Remy mentioned family members and whatnot, and, and you know, you know. So you know, then when Pun passed away, and and you know, people needed money and whatnot. You know, how are we gonna give you money? You know, Pun was our dude, and you was doing him. You know, oh, I'm starting to talk like Remy. <laughs> you was do, you know doing him dirty and and whatnot and junk. <laughs> You know, so I don't know, you know, what the who's in, but I got to tell you something. I was listening to my, my, I was just like, oh, well, that makes perfect sense to me. And then Remy was like, and how's she going to put his chain up on eBay? You know, he started that. It, you know, I mean, I was like, yeah, well, but she's got three kids. They got to eat, Rem, you know, you all aren't giving her money. And I understand why. Oh, gosh. Anyway, can you please see if the piece is still on it, eBay? It's not on there anymore. Well, is there a notification? I mean, if somebody buys something for $100,000, huh? Ashanti's people just called, and they said it's a good likeness, but it's not her. Rewind the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, please come back in here. I'm not going to spend any more time looking at it. I know what I saw, like the R. Kelly video. <laughs> Zoe, go to your room. Joey's the first one up there, boy. Oh, you get yeah. you. Oh, yeah. It's your four scratch. Oh, four some D's. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, anyway, Fat Joe, I say all that to say, is particip he participated in a 10 day Amazon.com promotion. It's kind of cool. Where artists hand deliver their CDs to customers who purchase them through the Amazon.com website. Dang dong, it's Fat Joe. I'm delivering my CD that you ordered of me. I think that's, that's pretty cool. Clay Akins, ding dong, how you doing? Here's my CD. Nick Lachey. Does he have a CD out? He, maybe he's delivering on behalf of his wife. 98 degrees. 98 degrees. 
Are people still listening to that? Yeah. That's the one hit one, though. <laughs> then Moby. Anyway, it's the 10th anniversary promotion of um, Amazon.com, and I think that's a great one. Oh, Nick Hand delivered newlyweds on DVD. Clay showed up with um, his personal memoir, Learning to Sing. I was talking about Joss Stone with The Gap earlier. You guys need to know more about it, too. Girl Fridays, Miss Artie's about to get it up. I just need you to... Can you freeze frame as you do it, Art? Yeah. Okay. Pause it for you. Let me put that for you. Right there. there he is. Go right down a little bit. You go right in. Shout out to Ashanti's people. I don't believe it for a minute that this is a good likeness. Too good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's her. Too good of a likeness. <clears throat> Joss Stone was dropped from the Gap go. ads. Mm. Look at the lips. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She's got paper thin lips. Her. She needs a you're in the hood now, baby special. It's, the, it's her hands too. Yeah. Yeah, you know she dances like that. You know she she and she judges her, her hair look, like no, that. Look at her smile. And she yeah. goes like that. Hell yeah. We are free Oh Maybe hell that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice try, Ashanti's people. <laughs> Maybe it just looks like Oh, no, no. please, Zoe. <laughs> Take her from the top allegedly. of the Allegedly. Oh, yes, allegedly her. Mm -hmm. Whatever. That, she does that move right there on stage with her hair. <laughs> in my mind. You know what's going on in my mind? Da -da 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 this program is brought to you by... Hey! Ghost! 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 That was my one. That was my Here comes Elisa Payne. She's... Uh, you know, I'm the one who got the call. She is... Ve now, look. Start from the beginning. Start from, start from the beginning. Start from the beginning, Art. When I see you, baby. Oh, your lips, your eyes. Love it when I see you. Oh, Trip Hollywood. That's her. I don't know. Back it up again and look close. Rewind, selector. The very first shot doesn't look like her to me. Stop what? it. Are you out of your mind? There, where did she flicked it here before that side profile? The side profile does look. Look at the other part. Hell, that's her. The face, the head on. That's her hands. Exactly, exactly. You know the hand. You know the hand gestures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, the gap just done. So she's eighteen, and she's been having a relationship with um, Bo Bo Dozier, and you know he's twenty five. He's the son of legendary Motown writing team of. Um, Bo Dozier and Dozier and Holland and Dozier. No, no, Lamont Dozier Holland. Right. So Lamont Dozier, that's his, that's his father. Well, Joss started having her affair with him when she was under 18, making her underage. And this boy is 25. They now live together. Joss Stone has been the face of the Gap ads. But they pulled the plug on the ads. A Gap spokesperson, and here's the quote from the spokesperson. See, in my opinion, and I'm probably not the only black person who's thinking that because Bo Dozier is black and he's, she's done so much public display of affection with him and so on and so forth. I realize it's 2005 and people are expected to be enlightened, but it ain't going to happen. Not in my lifetime. There, you know, at least three times a day, I'm reminded of my, how are you saying? Splabooism. Yes, there you go. <laughs> for good or for bad, it is what it is what it is. And I hope, you know, for my grandchildren, you know, life will be better in America. You ain't nothing but them. But you ain't nothing but them. So here she is, all white and naive, thinking she's just going to be able to slob down this overage black man. Oh. And people are only judging her on the, the basis of that he's older than her. Not that he's, you know, black as night and she's whiter than white. <laughs> she was black. <clears throat> As the night. <laughs> Look, this is what the Gap spokesperson says. People take the age of consent extremely seriously in America. The backbone of Gap's business is, are you ready, folk? Uh oh here. In small towns in middle America where people are very, very conservative, especially in the Bible Belt. As a result... I think they have made it pretty clear that Stone's association with the company is over. Big companies such as The Gap always err on the side of caution. 
Now, you can say what you want about, well, they're replacing her with Black Michelle from Destiny's Child. Mm -mm. You know what this was about. In my mind. This 62-year-old woman was accused of groping an airport screen. Oh! <laughs> oh, my God. It's not that serious. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, like he smells something. <laughs> Face all twisted up. <laughs> well, here's how it happened. You know how you go through the airports and the, you're underwire, everything's just a beeping and a carrying on. I don't even bother anymore. I just walk through like... Go ahead, you know. Well, apparently the 60-year-old woman was upset about being hand-searched at the airport and shoved the security oh. screener. They grabbed her by the breast and twisted. Oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> the woman, the 62-year-old woman said she was reacting in self-defense to an absolute invasion of my body. Well, you know, as somebody who's, you know, active maybe in life and sexually and stuff, that might not be a big deal. But sometimes, you know, like a 62 and 62, in my mind, you're still having sex, aren't you? I would think so, too, Zoe. But then again, I think at 25, you are. But, uh, oh! Don't mouth, don't mouth that over here. <laughs> Zoe's the first one to mouth. I would think so. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Nothing but crickets for you. <laughs> Nothing but crickets for her. <laughs> you know, she she was upset at the prospect of being touched. <laughs> oh. and, and And hooked off, shoved and stuff. Oh. This all happened uh, yesterday. Phyllis, she's 62, she was charged with assault, and if convicted, she's a retired technology school teacher, and she faces a year in prison and a $100,000 fine. Damn. You better remember how to act when they're just, just let them do it and get it over with. Oh, my gosh. Here's what she said. Phyllis said, I said, what are you doing? No one's done that to me before. Zoe, if you don't capture your moment, this is going to be you at 62. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Listen, Phyllis goes on to say, and she kept going for what felt like an interminable long, <laughs> terminably long time. It seemed to go on and on in my mind. Zoe, are you listening? <laughs> Phyllis denied that she shoved the woman, but she admits that she did put her hands on the woman's breast. Ooh. Phyllis goes on to say, I was mortified. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look at his face. <laughs> Phyllis said, I was mortified that I had done that. I was reacting to what felt like an absolute invasion of my body. <laughs> How would you like it if someone did that to you? And then this is what the the, the agent, you know, the feeler upper said. She came at me uh -oh. and grabbed my breast and squeezed them with a firm pressure. How you, <laughs> How you doing? Horny granny. <laughs> well, well, I'll keep track of this case and let you know how it go. You know, ooh, not a year in jail and a hundred thousand dollar fine. She's next to Lil Kim. Exactly. Hi, Wendy. I want to know the doctor who fixed your ears. I love your show, Doctor Michael Jones. Doctor Michael Jones of the fabulous Doctor Michael Jones Plastic Surgery Practice on Sixty First. I think it's Sixty First Street. It's up near Bloomingdale's. I know that area well. I love that whole area. I can tell you what's in the area. Hannah for hair. Betsy Johnson for clothes. Bloomingdale's for everything. Dr. Michael for um, surgery. And a smattering of other places in between. That's a great part of town. Upper East Side. Not too far up. Because you catch some bad attitudes being a splabu shopping up there. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's, you know. You can seek solace in, in Dr. Jones's office, though. He's good. He's nice with his scalpel. Mm -hmm.
<sighs> we need to take a break. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Everything is so urgent. <laughs> and we'll be back with more of the Wendy Williams experience after these commercial messages. Thank you. Hey, what's up? This is Amory. And how you doing? This is John Starks. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It it's not, doesn't seem as difficult to get people to say how you doing when they come up. That is it? Does it? <clears throat> people understand it's a friendly greeting of the show. It has underlying meanings, but, you know. They know it's just a joke. Yeah, we're, we're having a good time. The people that give a problem about doing it is the people <clears throat> that respect. That's exactly. <laughs> I met Elvis Duran earlier today. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's a fan of the show. He's a fan of the show. He's a little man too. He's short. Yeah, he's funny. is he funny? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We met, and he stood on his toes. That was that's the little man to the big girl joke. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like how's the weather up there? But I never met him before, and it was nice to meet him. We were doing a project. The New York Radio Radio Council or whatever is pulling together like, you know, like the top people to do this um, short DVD on radio a advertising and why it works. And so we all, you know, we weren't all there at the same time, but Elvis did his before I did mine. And I anyway, and so we saw each other in passing. I was like, hey, hey, hey. Like, I love the mutual respect. I hate the days in radio where everybody wanted to, you know, you work at that station, you work at that station, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Because that's, that's what the man wants us to do. <laughs> at the end of the day, we don't own nothing. We are paid hogs. And at any given point, me and Elvis could be working together. So why am I going to hate him? Because the man wants us to. <laughs> I'm not a hater like that, man. And I'm over all that, you know. All that, you know, who's doing what to, you know? What up, Ange? Hey, listen, Style Maker um, wants to say um, she's disappointed that Bobby and Whitney on the Being Bobby Brown show were showing the kids playing with toy guns. Well, excuse me, did you see Bobby pitch wood when he walked into the hunting store? You know, I want to see the baddest thing you got. Yeah. The whole show is a crash and burn, but we love it. And shout out to Donnell. Donnell's over in East Arm and she says, why is John Singleton bugging over people bootlegging hustle flow? He should know Splaboos bootleg everything, so why would we stop and just because Hustle <laughs> Flow is a black film? <laughs> he should get over it and start promoting his and start promoting his DVD because that's exactly where it's going. Signed a forty year old rapping pimp. Let's get real. <laughs> PS What's good, Artie? <laughs> and I love your C D Wendy. Thank you, rapping pimp. I think. <laughs> Vanessa, I think we stopped using the half and a quarter in three months, probably after our sixth birthday. Vanessa is 50 and a half, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I love you, Vanessa. And she ripped this out of um, today, today's post for me. I did not see this. Thank you, Vanessa. Oh, so cute at 50 and a half. <laughs> Vanessa. Pits Did you see this? Pittsburgh Steeler, um, the Hall of Famer, Franco Harris. Oh, he was so fine back in the day. Oh, that luxurious curly black hair. All them muscles. And that beard. Running up and down that court. No, the field. The field. <laughs> with the, that tight, those tight pants and those big shoulders. He was big before I realized they were shoulder pads. Dish. Those big <laughs> shoulders. Well, he was in the Tropicana Casino in Atlantic City early yesterday when a fire broke out. The fire, well, the fire alarm went off. And he was there with his wheelchair-bound mother. Oh, <laughs> oh damn you. Moment of silence. And it was 1 o'clock in the morning. Doing what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
a wheelchair mother would have tried That's the devil hour. Look at that old lady doing. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Franco and his mother one in the morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is that um, the security guards let him know how to get her out of the building. But <clears throat> what ended up happening is they, they were first suggested to use the escalator, then the elevator. It turned out to be a false alarm. Thank God. Thank you from Vanessa. Friend of the show, 50 and a half. <clears throat> Hey, on Sunday, July 31st, the WBLS family is going to be up in Harlem at Grant's Tomb for Unity Day. <clears throat> West 122nd Street and Riverside Drive. It's all day long. The food, the, the goings on, fun for you and the whole family. And then as we dip into the night, there's a concert under the stars with Melissa Morgan, Freddie Jackson, and Layla Hathaway. And they're doing... <laughs> Art told a funny joke <laughs> at the Laugh Factory it's true. about how it's true. Freddie Jackson likes a golden shower. It was a true story. And he got mad and wanted to fight. And he was drinking. And he, Freddie was drinking. I remember, I said that. And remembered that Art said it on the radio and shook Art's hand hello, but squeezed it with the squeeze of death. <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> I don't remember the rest of the story. I had my drinks, but... <laughs> hey, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be there five, in your place from 5 to 6. I'm seeing the fashion show. Oh. All right. Representing the show. Okay. <laughs> Go on the website and find out more information. It's 107 Days of Summer at WBLS. That's on Sunday, everybody. Mm. And, of course, the party don't stop in Mount Vernon. Lounge 42 is the place to be. Adrian Lloyd says, Wendy, about Ashante. I've seen it. It's not her, but it's very close. Brian in New York City says, who are these Ashanti's people? Trying to steer us off the track. We saw her just a rubbing and <laughs> dubbing. Brian says, Wendy, I just downloaded this, the Ashanti sex tape. I think it's hard, hard to really be sure if it's her, but there is a resemblance. <coughs> TV Guide is about to relaunch itself as, in a larger format. <coughs> just what we need, something else to clutter up the night table. I like it small because then it sits there very nice and cute on the night table like the Jet Magazine, yeah. right? Who needs a TV Guide the size of Marie Claire? They're going to be emphasizing more on lifestyle and entertainment. Well, I haven't bought TV Guide in years. All of a sudden, I think there's a reason to start buying it again. Listen to the ratio. Listen to the ratio breakdown, everybody. 25% of the new TV Guide is going to be about the TV listings. 75% about it is going to be about stories. Isn't that great? You know, gossip and pop culture stuff. That's great. Well, look for the relaunch to happen October 17th. Would you buy it? I'm going to get my free subscription when I'm invited to the relaunch party. Oh. I know that they're going to have a party, and probably part of the loot bag is going to be a subscription. And if I don't get invited, if I don't go, no. I don't need any more magazines. But you have the guide channel for it. Uh, that's what, exactly. That guide channel is my friend. Yeah. I'm so glad the city taxes are lowering, but what does that really mean? I'm still sending everything over to Jersey. Actually, no, because the Jersey tax is six, what six percent, right? Who lives in Jersey in here? Six percent sales tax in Jersey, right? And not Connecticut. Yeah, eight percent is entirely too high. I make purchases sometimes in Manhattan. I'll have them send them right over to Jersey. I learned that from my mom back in the day. They will mail those things right over to Jersey. Mm-hmm. It is. On the stores tab. You can talk and negotiate that down. Only thing I don't like is, is that 
H and M doesn't do that, and that H and M over in the Livingston Mall sucks. I mean, they try to throw Jersey a little bone by saying H and M. It's not the real H and M. I mean, they have like five percent of what the one on Fifth Avenue has. That's the one. Whew. That is the one. Boris Becker's relationship is on the rocks. You know, the tennis champ who who had sex with the black girl in the in the broom closet at the at oh. the <laughs> restaurant <laughs> and got her pregnant on the first run up in. Yeah. Had that little black baby that looks just like him too. Yes. Yes. Well, his relationship with his French girlfriend of three years, Caroline is her name. That's on the rocks. According to what they're saying, um, Boris Becker, who happens to be thirty seven and good looking. I, I mean, I find him attractive in a real red hair, freckly kind of way. <clears throat> anyway, he's known for his women womanizing. And they've been going through a crisis for the past six months, Boris says, because of my frequent trips for work. But he does have a new girlfriend. A 17-year-old Russian oh. girl named Elena who met him on the Spanish Mediterranean island of Majorca. You know, it just sounds so plain to be from New Jersey. <laughs> Why everybody's living and luxuriating at all? Look at these people are teasing and popping in broom closets in Majorca. I'm going through the damn stinking tunnel to Montclair. <laughs> And uh, don't laugh because you're driving up to Connecticut and you're going back over to Brooklyn. <laughs> These people, the world is their playground. What does a 17-year-old Russian girl know about luxuriating in the Mediterranean island of Majorca? Where she meets Boris Becker, a 37-year-old man. Oh, it sounds so glamorous and fabulous. Oh, in the meantime, he divorced his wife, Barbara. They were married for seven years. They have two children. He divorced her back in 2001 when it was revealed that he had that sexual tryst in the broom closet of the restaurant with the, the black woman and got her pregnant. And, the, and there was no denying the baby looks just like. And he takes care of the baby, too. Do you hear these people's lives? That's so fabulous and glamorous and messy, but wow. Well, it's time for me to, exactly, it's time for me to get into my regular old car and get out in the streets with you regular old people. We're just plain old people here. No, shout out to everybody who travels the world. I like to hear about your, your travels and stuff, but... <clears throat> I like to keep it real generic. Jersey to Manhattan every day. That's it. <laughs> every once in a while, a trip to South Kakalaka or someplace to visit a market. I can't. Majorco. 17 luxuriating in this, this Mediterranean sun. Oh, and we think we're doing something because we're going to South Beach. South with an F. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. I love you guys for listening today. Thank you so much for being all a part of the show and, and stuff and laughing along with us, laughing at us. You look, I'll take it any way you want to give it. Just, you know, thank you for being. I mean, thank you for listening today. Bonnie Harper's up next with The Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. Bye-bye. Wendy Williams broadcast.